Uh, the way I got started on this, I uh, got in the back of popular science, and there's a whole bunch of uh, things you can send for. I sent for uh, everything I could see, I sent away, and uh, for maybe 20 different plans for different things. And uh, the one thing that I thought was pretty neat was this thing called a 300 horsepower fuelless engine. And it's by Creative Science. And so I sent away for this $16 for the plans. And it was a uh, high voltage, like 6,000 volts, 200 amps. And it seemed really like a really dangerous thing to me. So, uh, and they also sent the, uh, at the same time I sent for this, they sent me a, a, the EV Gray patent. And obviously what this thing was is a poor man's version of an AV, EV Gray motor. And any of you can order these plans. It's in the back of Popular Sciences Company. Uh, they don't always send the plans after you send the money, but you know. <laughs> so it's true. I, got, I didn't, you know. So anyways, so that's how I got. So I got all interested in this EV Gray thing. That was about five years ago. And then I made a couple motors. And first motor, I gave it to this really brilliant drunk guy, and I never got it back. <laughs> Second motor, I took it to a Bill Beatty science meeting, and it uh, caught on fire. <laughs> it's made of wood. So, so I progressed since then. And uh, so. Uh, now I got these things that uh, are, are seem to be running over Unity. The last three labs I took it to, uh, they all said it's over Unity and free energy and all that. So, and I like to kind of downplay it. I just say, "Oh no, you're 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 wrong. Your measurements are wrong. It, that can't be true." You know, just kind of joking. That's kind of my attitude right now. Pretty soon, okay. First, I'll tell you about the operation. How, how it operates. Okay, it's very similar to EV gray motor. You have an electromagnetic coil against an electromagnetic coil. And uh, let me grab a motor right here. Are you showing the thing? Oh, I see. And uh, so they've always had a lot of spark flash problems on these gray motors, is what I've heard. You know, you know, it's mainly the commutating problem has always been the problem because they can't be that reliable enough. So, um, so, I, so I came up with this roller commutator idea. The thing spins, so every time the brush hits it, it spins, and it doesn't like uh, tear apart the metal really bad, all this uh, flash. Anyways, but they aren't working that well right now. I think I need to use tungsten steel or something. It's kind of something I'm experimenting with, but they can really fly. But still, the best thing you can do right now that I've found is MOSFETs, these big 40 amp MOSFETs. They work great, quiet, and they go really fast. They last forever and they're reliable. And they also have huge spikes. Uh, they put out. So let's see. Um, now I'll get into the windings, how I wind the coils. I was wondering, I wanted to ask Norman uh, how, do the, how the coils in these gray motors, are they, you know, like you wind a coil, is it just like back and forth, you know, or is it a directional pattern, or is it some special thing, do you, do you know? It's just... We haven't torn one of the coils apart yet to see exactly how he wound it, but I'm sure that he does the same way you do. You'd wind a layer, and then they put a layer of, of insulating tape. Yeah. And then overwind layer on top of a layer. It's got a, it's a very precise pattern that he used. Oh. Just looking at the coil, it's, it's about the way you wind yours. Okay. Okay, well, um, what I was wondering, so oh, one thing I found is this guy told me to use a Teflon tape you know, you use for plumbing. It works great to put over the layer, like you do a wind on a coil, put Teflon tape over there. It has a 400 degree melting temperature. It's real thin, works great. But, uh, but what, I, what I was wondering though is the, is the way the, uh, okay, like if you buy a coil like in a store or something, it'll be wound, like the machine will wind it. It'll go all the way through and then it'll just go back this way, all the way through and you know, just back and forth wind. Now, uh, this guy named Jim Leatherman, um, who died last year, is a really great guy. He built like 24 Bedini motors. I used to email him. We used to email all the time. I learned a whole bunch from this guy. But he, he suggested I try a directional wind, and, and uh, that's what I do now, and it really works good. This guy, um, uh, if you go to a, uh, a site called the very last page of the internet.com, a guy named Don Adstit, he lives up by me in Seattle. And he filmed my motor, he has a videos of my motors on there. But anyways, he, 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 he tested some of these directional winds. 
I'll show you how I do it in just a sec. And he said that um, uh, it's way, way more powerful. And he showed me a coil that it had the same amount of power as one of these small coils I have here, right here. And his was about three times larger, way more, uh, way more inefficient. And uh, he said that one matched the power of the directional. So um, that was, uh, the directional is just way uh, more powerful, at least for what I'm doing, which is colliding coils against each other together all the way through. And this is what I've been really working on a lot, because uh, it's pretty fun, because now you have one, one half of that motor coil that becomes an electromagnet is uh, the motor, you know, it's the motor coil, and the other half is a generator part of the winding. So every time you fire one, you generate in the other half. It's a great thing. So what you do on this motor over here, I have, uh, I have uh, the vertical firing in green and the red and uh, horizontal in, uh, in red, just to make it simple to understand. And I have a, a MOSFET firing the red and another MOSFET firing the green. And uh, what, you, what I'm doing here, it's a pretty neat thing. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of a self-contained uh, uh, generator motor thing. So what, so what you do is uh, that you, you, you take the opposite firing that's not the, you know, you take the vertical firing, you take that induction, the kickback and everything, and you throw it into the, uh, the half of the motor that is just about to fire. And then when that one fires, you kick that into the one that just fired. So you have an alternating motor generator thing. I don't know if I explained that very well. Um, but you, uh, so it's an alternating, it's not alternating current, it's, it's, D, it's always DC pulse, but I'm, I'm, I always have somewhere to stick the current. And that's the, that's the firing that's coming up on the next firing. So it's a pretty neat thing. And it's all like contained right in there. And, um, and you do that with the bifilers, and, and, and uh, uh, so I, and there's more things about bifilers. I could, I'm not going to get too much into that, but you, also uh, the two wires together, uh, they, uh, it's more efficient with the skin effect and all this, but never mind about that. You take a tomato and you throw it, you throw it, two tomatoes against each other. Let's say you have a tomato, and it's exactly uh, 10 ounces, another tomato exactly 10 ounces, exactly the same everything, throw them at exactly the same speed, they hit in midair, what happens? They smash in midair and they'll create this splash, halo, radiant halo, right? All around, and it comes out at 90 degrees. That's, what I, that's why I mount these things. They pick up, you mount these on the sides of the motor and they pick up that energy. And it's amazing, one of these little coils will put out seven volts, you know. And so I run, uh, right now I'm running 20 of them together. And I was, I was telling Peter the other day about the, the I saw the gray patent, and all that, this same thing works if you ring your coil uh, all the way around like this, like a daisy with, with pickup windings. You don't have to necessarily push them in there like that. But anyways, so I call this the splatter energy, even though that's not a very good name for it, but it's just what I call it, and so it's too bad. And so, anyways, uh, so I run all these in series. And now I have a really high voltage coming out of this thing. This will zing right up in your arm and out the other arm, and you'll, and you'll hate it. <laughs> and so, and meanwhile, it's only running on like one amp, you know? It's like one amp pulse in a, in a sawtooth on a scope, and you know, it's, so, and, but meanwhile, it'll, it will kill you, you know, if you had these taped to you. So, 